Hello, I am Joe Quirk, president of the Seasteading Institute, and the safest place to be in a pandemic is a seastead. Here's a list of countries with zero reports of COVID cases as of early April. Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, Cook Islands, Nauru, Nui, Kiribati, and Palau. Discern any pattern? Almost all the continental nations report COVID cases. Almost all island nations report zero cases. If any of you pestilential land folk arrive at my seastead being built right now in Panama, you have to park your boat on my floating dock that also serves as a wave breaker. I will remove my gurney bridge until you comply with my demands to enter. So some of my demands may be weird. Maybe I'll ask that you swim through tropical salt water. Or maybe I'll just ask you to take your temperature. The point is the response to the pandemic on the ocean will be developed by many people from the bottom up. The rules will all be determined in a decentralized way through competition among sea pods, engaging the global brain, which is smarter than any politician's brain. We don't need rules for virus response imposed from the top down. We just need dispersed information and people following the rules they choose for their sea pods, and we discover the diverse best practices for a response to COVID based on different localities and circumstances using tacit knowledge, or as I like to call it, quirky knowledge. After the plague comes the Renaissance. The most famous Renaissance started in Venice. Venice didn't happen on land. People had to exit and found a society in a marsh where, they, where the bad governments of Europe couldn't reach them. There were no kings in the marsh. Venice would cure the world of feudalism. Seasteads will cure the world of statism. Better examples are how this happens. Steve Wozniak worked at Hewlett Packard, but he didn't change Hewlett Packard from inside Hewlett Packard. Once they rejected his design for the personal computer five times, they said, why would people need a personal computer? The overlords didn't get it. So he was forced to quit and found Apple. And now we have personal computers. Forget the personal computer. How about the personal government? This is the C-Pod being developed right now by the company Ocean Builders. C-Pods require no investors. They're cheap enough to go straight to customers. This is why floating beats voting. If we can flag this, we don't need to convince the majority, we just need to convince one customer, then two, then scale up. This is not a new technology. The challenge for seasteaders has always been to bring the price of this down from a billion dollars to something a middle-class family could afford on the high seas. These will cost less than the average American home. Imagine each of these with a different flag. Panama, the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, little bits of sanctioned sovereignty next door to each other. I don't want a free society. I want thousands of free societies, each family-sized. We want a swarm of discovery machines. I call them Hayek Islands. At first, they'll be an oasis for libertarians, but quickly they'll become a discovery process, finding solutions that even your favorite libertarian theorist can't imagine. Nicholas Nassim Taleb popularized the black swan, but our Seastead lawyer, Tom W. Bell, author of Your Next Government, From Nation States to Stateless Nations, he writes about the golden swan, the solutions nobody predicted, but evolution discovers through trial and error. Golden swans float. The aerospace engineer who designs and funds the sea pod has developed a new technique, which I named Coral Crete. They're going to encase the spar in bio rock that grows three times as fast as previous processes. Unlike the foundation of the building I'm sitting in right now, seasteads encased in coral crete are an appreciating asset at sea. 
getting stronger over time. <clears throat> Coral gardens. Next time somebody asks you if your startup society is sustainable, you say, sustainability? Man, that is so 2019. Seasteaders have already moved on to environmental regeneration. Join us. This is how we win. Ecotourists will stay on a CB&B without changing their ideology. As of 2019, we have the marine technology. In 2020, we need the legal technology, which is a custom-made seastead flag. We're in talks with at least three flagging registries, and another four registries are in the early stages of discussion. Given the catastrophic collapse of shipping around the world, flag registries are competing to be the first to establish a custom-made seastead flag. Now is the time to strike in my opinion, a specially designed seastead flag is the holy grail for free societies. It would open up an expanse of the ocean larger than any country. And if you know any leaders in other flagging registries, email the Seasteading Institute and introduce us. If you build it, they will come. A floating startup society is no threat to local people. You won't get nimbyism. Der Turken are learned land. Bad governments are founded on monopoly control of land. Seasteads are the technology to decentralize the very ground beneath our feet. This is not an argument for voluntary societies. This is a technology for voluntary societies. The technology for variation and selection among societies. A research and development zone for better governance the machinery of freedom to choose. Technology beats philosophy every time. Stop arguing, start building seasteads. People ask me if stories are based on reality. Man, reality is based on stories. Eight years ago, when I learned about the approaching technical feasibility of seasteading, I decided it was the most important thing to be done. So I set out to tell the stories to bring a thousand times more brains to this and make it happen by 2020. It's happening. Why support nonprofits? Why do you think this is happening? Is it because entrepreneurs and investors got together on their own and figured out a for-profit way to do this? They didn't even know about each other until they heard the story. The story is what inspired volunteers to make every picture I'm showing to you. This image that you're looking at right now was made by architect Bart Rofen of Blue 21 for the book. This is the book, rave reviews from Wall Street Journal, Reason, Matt Ridley. The story is what attracted French Polynesia, land of startup societies on islands, to reach out to the Seasteading Institute and the story is what inspired Satoshi. This is the German aerospace engineer who started seasteading in the Andaman Sea off Thailand. I'll let you in on a little secret. Ocean Builders is financed, and the single-family seastead is engineered by Rudiger Koch, who wants to build a launch loop to go into space, and he needs a large swath of the ocean to do it in, which means he needs a large swath of freedom. He needs Tom W. Bell's sea zone, and he needs a specially designed seastead flag. Everything you heard about this story in the news is wrong. Excited to show his home country of Thailand how he planned to make them rich, he consulted Thai lawyers and got permission from the harbor master to build this. Rudiger Koch engineered and built this for $150,000. This is the Motorola phone from 1984. Dumb people say it's ugly. Smart people say it works and it's cheap. Ocean Builders had commitments from a few hundred buyers. Investors expressed interest in an underwater restaurant outside the territorial waters of Thailand. 
This was going to be the next project. Rudiger set out to acquire a Seastead flag. Then this minor setback caused the number of people signing up, quote, I want to buy a Seastead to triple during the manhunt. Millions of people who had never heard of seasteading before were watching clips of our documentary in the international media. The Thai Navy volunteered to be cartoon villains in this stark morality play happening before the eyes of the world about an innocent young couple in love, threatened with death, and chased by the mighty Thai Navy. The story is what made people choose sides in this conflict. The story is what inspired hundreds of people to help them. And the very same day, the media were breathlessly selling you fake news about the ongoing manhunt and saying, where is Chad and Nadia? Where are they? Are they dead? This secret picture was taken. The story is what inspired the entrepreneur on the left, Grant Romant, to meet me at the Floating City Conference in Singapore, which is what provided cover for him to get the immigration paperwork, race out on a speedboat, and deliver to the seasteaders, who had been stranded at sea, on the run for 10 days. Low food, low water, low gas. Grant delivered the legal entry paperwork one minute before the Singapore police surrounded them with gunboats while fighter jets circled overhead. That is Rudiger Koch facing down the gunboats. Grant Romant, their rescuer, who took this photo, is now CEO of Ocean Builders. Why did he pull himself out of retirement to do this? He was already living in a floating home. A few weeks before this, I told him the story of seasteading while we were on the plane on the way to Anarcapulco. And he said, I'm in with both feet. He contacted Ocean Builders and said, I'm moving to Thailand. Then after this, he followed them to Panama. He designed the sea pod for Panama. Ocean Builders will invite all seasteading companies to join them as they work on securing an ocean concession from the government of Panama. The story is what made Panama invite us to the presidency. On the right is Aldo Antonori, who now works at Zencash. He fell in love with the seasteading story and let us know that the Panama Canal is the central hub of shipping in the Western Hemisphere. And they have access to two oceans with no hurricanes. To his left is Tom W. Bell, who cut short his vacation in ephemeral to fly to Panama and help me present to several government ministries there, some of which are listed on, the, on your left. In the middle, that's not Antonio Banderas, that's me. On the other side of me is Grant Romant, CEO of Ocean Builders, designer of the Sea Pod. You may recognize the person next to him who is none other than Circe Pierpoint, who ran the Colon Free Trade Zone in Panama and co-owns the Linton Bay Marina with Alan Bytel, who was next to him, who ceremoniously passed the wine test I proposed in the book while floating in a deep water seastead spar in Panama, showing off the fact that the wine didn't ripple in waves as motorboats passed by. Are ocean builders really going to get a maritime concession in Panama? Hector Alexander, the Panamanian Minister of the Economy and Finance, studied under Milton Friedman in Chicago. Libertarians have infiltrated the Panamanian government. Another way to say this is the Panamanian government is very libertarian. They know damn well why they got rich. Panama City, 1980. Panama City, 2020. Four special economic zones. The second largest in the world next door to this was formerly presided over by Sir Pierpoint, who is currently hosting sea pod production in his personal marina. Who, Sirs is my friend now. 
Look, all the Seasteaders together in Linton Bay Marina, where the 3D printer is now installed, the respectable Sirs Pierpoint has completely changed his image since becoming a Seasteader. What the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. Richard Bach. Which is more terrifying, the Thai Navy or a virus? If Chad, Nadia, Rudy, and Grant can turn a military death threat into an opportunity, they can turn a virus into an opportunity. Chad, Nadia, Rudy, and Grant think freedom-loving people are as courageous as them. Hey, all you wealthy libertarian donors out there, stop funding the arguers. Start funding the pioneers. Seasteading isn't crazy. Politics is crazy. Demonstrate freedom works, and you'll change government as significantly as Hong Kong changed China, as fundamentally as constitutional republics in North America changed the old world. How did the free world win the Cold War? By nuclear war? By rational arguments? No. By better examples. The Soviet Union collapsed because of blue jeans and the Beatles. The Soviet people could see freedom was more fun and produced better results, and they wanted it. Choice beats voice. Floating beats voting. Try this sometime. Go on Facebook, type, what businesses do you want to create on seasteads that you can't on land, and watch the business ideas stack up. Demonstration beats persuasion. Let freedom float. The blue frontier waits to be discovered. Support the storytelling that is driving seasteading in the imaginations of next year's heroes, because this is your immediate future. The ocean renaissance is fast approaching. Please make a big donation. We accept Bitcoin. The Seasteading Institute is funded entirely by individual donors who think outside the box of the state. Oceans first, Mars next. Thank you for your attention.